The Art Brain was a LARP that Ali Beer designed for the Henny Onsta Center for Contemporary Art in 2015. Uh, we were commissioned to teach 400 children aged 5 to 9 about two of the exhibited artists uh, in one day. Um, this is Hilma of Klint. She lived her whole life in Sweden and she was immensely productive. She painted more than 1,000 uh, surrealist paintings. She was a true pioneer, but no one knew because her mentor, Rudolf Steiner, advised her that the world wasn't ready for her paintings. So in her will, she stated that none of it was to be exhibited until 40 years after her death. So in the 80s, her genius was discovered and she was finally recognized. And this is Kurt Schwitters. Uh, he's a modernist, or he was a modernist, a Dadaist. He worked with sculpture, he worked with paintings, collage, sound, and he was also a pioneer of what we call installation art today. Uh, the Nazi party declared his work a degenerate and he had to escape. He came to Norway in 1937. Uh, and then when Nazi Germany invaded Norway, he escaped to England in 1940. And there's a per permanent exhibition at Henny Onsta of his early work and his connections to Norway. So 400 children are to learn about this. Uh, and before I continue, I want you to picture in your mind an art gallery. It probably looks something like this. And what's wrong with it? This is wrong with it. It sucks to be a child in an art gallery. Uh, children are very tactile uh, in their learning experiences. They want to touch things, pick them up, feel the texture, check how heavy it is, and, and play with it. Uh, I don't think any of you have tried to walk around an art gallery on your knees. It's a really dumb thing to do because you can't see any of the paintings. Uh, and it's the same for children. Uh, and there's no running. Like when, when you're at an art gallery, it's a quiet, reflective experience where you walk around and from a measured distance you say, hmm, while you look at the paintings. And children also hate that. Uh, there's no interaction in an art gallery. Children love the technical museums because everything has a button and when you touch the button, something happens. Uh, and, and it's possible to play with the technical museum. So, so the question is, how do we turn the art gallery uh, into an interactive experience? And obviously, the answer is to use LARP. Um, the Art Brain wasn't the first time we worked with an art museum. This is uh, Living Pictures. It's uh, a LARP we made at Lilla Amir Kunstmuseum in uh, 2014, where you can see uh, We've created characters based on paintings, and the children had to help them find back because they had disappeared out of the paintings and they had lost their mind, and, and the children had to help. And children love to be helpful, so it's very playable, and, and it's very understandable. But how do you play this? <laughs> how, how do you portray this? How, how do you turn this into a character? It's, it's just geometric <laughs> shapes and colors. Um, so it's, it's not easy. Uh, our first idea was to uh, make a detective story. A painting has been stolen, the children have to look for clues inside the paintings. But that creates the impression that there's a correct way to interpret art. And also it's very difficult to make a detective story that's exciting for five-year-olds and nine-year-olds. Our second idea was to uh, tell a story about astronauts who had discovered an alien culture and the children had to be space anthropologists <laughs> and interpret what this alien society was like by looking at the art. And, and that's very open to, to interpretation, but it's also a very complex story. I don't think many five-year-olds know what an anthropologist does. <laughs> uh, and also, how do you turn Henny Onsta Kunstcenter into a space station? <coughs> Uh, but the idea we went with came to us when we asked ourselves, I wonder what made Schwitters cry? What if we made the LARP about feelings, the feelings in the art? What if, where do feelings live? Obviously, they live in our brain. So what if the museum has a brain, an art brain, and inside that brain there lives feelings? And those feelings have the job of 
sorting and collecting the art and deciding what feelings is represented in each piece of artwork. So we built a brain inside the museum. Um, and in this installation, the first thing that happens is the children arrive and they meet the archivist. <laughs> Do you want to become an art agent? <laughs> the archivist gives the children uh, an agent card, an agent ID that they have to fill out to prepare before they get to enter the art brain. And it looks like this, I am an agent. This is how old I am, this is my name. And they also have to like, fill out something about when they're happy, when they're angry, and when they're sad. And it's, it's a primer uh, for what's to come inside the art brain. And on the other side, uh, there's this report card about the two different uh, artists. Here they have to like, report how much happy, how much angry, how much sad do they find when they look at uh, the paintings, and what are my conclusions. And this is a bit vague, but it doesn't matter how the children interpret these instructions, because it's only there to motivate them and to, to give them direction and make them understand what it's about when they walk around and look at the paintings. So they have filled out this agent ID, and then they get to start the adventure. They get to crawl through a magical tunnel into the art brain, and it's a very good way to mark the beginning of the adventure. Uh, it's a simple way to tell them this is where play begins. And it's also very exciting because they couldn't see what was on the inside of the brain before they had crawled all the way through the tunnel. Inside the brain, they met the different feelings. Each one portrayed as a character. Here you have joy and you have anger and in the very dark blue room you have sadness. And here the children are asked, what is my feeling like? Do you know my feeling? What does it look like? How can we find that feeling in a piece of art? Uh, they also tried to convince the children that they were the best feeling <laughs> because they wanted as much art as possible. But after moving through the whole uh, art brain, they get to exit the gallery, uh, exit into the gallery and see the exhibitions. And in the museum, the children encountered what we call the art bodies who are magical dream creatures who love art uh, and who swarm around places with a lot of art, like uh, a contemporary art museum. Uh, this is the Hilma of Klint exhibition. These paintings are enormous, and you can see the art creatures are the ones that belong to Hilma of Klint. And the art bodies were there to, to uh, help the children along, play with the children, ask them questions, about what they could see in the art. Uh, maybe if the children had questions about what they were supposed to do, the art bodies could help them. Uh, but they were there to drive play along inside the museum, and it's also a way to make those dead pictures on the wall living inside the room. And then, when the report card is finished, uh, they report the findings to the helper of the archivist. And the uh, helper is very serious about this and, and asks them why have they reported like this and this and why did they think Schwitters was sad and Hilma was happy. Uh, and it's ceremoniously put into a giant tome uh, and then uh, they get their agent cards uh, stamped to tell them they have finished their task. And we designed uh, the art brain for two very specific exhibitions at the Henny Onstad Contemporary Art Center. But then we took the art brain and moved it. And we brought it to Moss, to Galerie F15. Um, and there, uh, there was an exhibition that they wanted to show children. And it was much more abstract, and it was much more surreal, like weird pottery. And there was a room just dedicated to different shades of blue. <laughs> and inside that room, you had the artist behind the blue room, and he was just looking at what was happening, mesmerized. I make art for grown-ups, but you come here, and suddenly the art belongs to the children. I don't understand how you did this. <laughs> uh, and I think that's the power of the art brain. It, it lasts between one and two hours. It's extremely scalable. 
And children can join continuously throughout the day. It's with the art brain, we've given more than 400 children the alibi they need to explore art and explore exhibitions in a creative and engaging manner. Thank you. <laughs>